Is a used iPhone 11 Pro for $320 a killer deal or is it a complete trap? After all, it was top of the line in 2019 and it's no secret that plenty of people are still using them. But are there any hidden catches that you might not know about until you've already done the deal? Let's find out, starting with the design. So in terms of design, it still looks pretty darn gorgeous, although the age is starting to show. We get the rounded edges instead of the flat sides, the older larger notch, and a much smaller camera bump. Although it's definitely still got the premium feel of a flagship with the stainless steel edges and matte glass back. And in fact, this was actually the first iPhone to have the matte glass back. It's definitely a lot more fingerprint resistant than shiny glass and it feels nicer, but it is more slippery in the hand without a case, especially with the Max model. But speaking of in the hand, the phone does feel pretty great to hold. It's not too thick and heavy and it's got just the right amount of heft to not be too light. One-handed use is great and it's very easy to carry in pockets. I think a lot of the comfort in the hand actually comes from the rounded edges. The flat sides are much worse off functionality wise and to be honest they don't look as good. Now with the 11 Pro Max it's the exact same design but in a 6.5 inch size instead of 5.8 inches. Therefore it's harder to use and carry around with one hand but you are getting that bigger screen. It's still relatively thin and light for a Pro Max model. More recent Max models are significantly thicker and heavier and have the less ergonomic flat sides. Now on the front, we get the 5.8 inch OLED display, which is slightly smaller than what we're used to nowadays with phones getting bigger and bigger, even the quote unquote normal sized ones. Now the notch at the top is larger than what we're used to nowadays with phones moving on to better solutions like the Dynamic Island on the 14 Pros. And uh, this notch is definitely a noticeable downgrade when comparing the 11 Pro to newer phones. I mean, it's not the biggest deal in the world, but it is a dead giveaway that the phone is an older one. Now inside the notch, we get the components for Face ID. Face ID on here still works really fast and with quite a few angles, so not really anything to complain about there. Now with the actual display quality, we get a resolution of 2436 by 1125, pixel density of 458 pixels per inch, 60Hz refresh rate, and a peak brightness of 800 nits. So we've got no individual pixels visible, colors are vibrant, and everything is super, super crispy. While the size is adequate for consuming content, it's not the absolute best. If you want a bigger screen for watching videos, the 11 Pro Max screen is more immersive. But then again, the normal 11 Pro is nowhere near being too small or cramped. It still provides a great viewing experience for pretty much anything, and for the average person and tech spec nerd alike, it does the job well. The only place it really shows its age is in the lower refresh rate. Now, the iPhone in general was very late in getting a refresh rate higher than 60 hertz, and back in 2019, this made the phone seem pretty far behind compared to other flagships from brands like Samsung, Google, OnePlus, etc. And uh, yeah, this hasn't helped the phone age as the years have gone on. As I always say, 60 hertz is fine for the vast majority of people, it's been the standard for over 10 years, and higher refresh rates will only please tech enthusiasts or people who are switching from an Android phone with one, in which case it might be a bit weird to adjust back down to 60Hz. But at this price point and for the year this phone is from, 60Hz is excusable. All in all, the display still holds up really well in terms of viewing experience and sharpness, but it's just missing a few quality of life features and bells and whistles that are present on newer phones. But speaking of newer phones, if you've just upgraded to the latest and greatest iPhone 14 Pro or 14 Pro Max, you'll want to protect your $1,000 glass slab in the best way possible, and in that sense, it really doesn't get any better than the new Cloudquish series from today's video sponsor, Casecrew. The new Cloudquish series are equipped with Casecrew's new air cushion technology, which provides 360 degree military grade protection against 3 meter drops. That is definitely a few drops in the toilet. Now not only that, but the case has a silky smooth feeling to it, so not only does it offer the best drop protection, but it also feels amazing to hold in the hand for times when you're using your phone a lot. But the best part out of all this is, you could actually get this case for free. Free. CaseQ has just launched their new testing campaign, so you could cop a free Cloudquish case by reviewing it on social media platforms such as on Instagram or YouTube. You can sign up for this campaign at the link in the description, and then all you have to do is fill out the form. Then, once your product is shipped to you and you've posted your review, you'll also be able to win either a $15 CaseQ coupon or a $10 Amazon gift card. It's a pretty darn good deal. You get a free high quality phone case and you can win those prizes afterwards as well at the link in the description below. Oh, and if you choose to buy other items on the site, use my affiliate link in the description to get 10% off your purchase. And thanks again to Case Crew for sponsoring this video. And now, back to the cameras. Now moving on to the back of the iPhone 11 Pro, we have the triple camera setup, with 12 megapixel main, ultra wide, telephoto, and selfie cameras. Now this setup was a pretty massive jump forward compared to previous iPhones, including having the triple camera setup for the first time, and adding tons of useful knickknacks. It's funny how back in 2019, we thought this bump was massive and ugly and out of place, but it's literally minuscule compared to the dinner plate sized lenses today. 
Now, while phone cameras have progressed quite a bit since the 11 Pro, that doesn't mean it's hard at all to get some darn impressive shots. Colors are still vibrant and consistent, detail is remarkably sharp, and it's just in general a good setup. It does the job well at capturing memories as well as professional photography, and this goes for portrait mode as well, which while at times it can be iffy around the edges, it also can produce some very professional looking results. But the main thing that the iPhone 11 series brought to the cameras was night mode. Night mode allows you to take much clearer photos in dark situations such as concerts or dark restaurants, and considering that this is the first generation of night mode, it works so darn well, even in near pitch dark environments. And this is one of those upgrades that actually helps out a lot, it's not just a gimmick, and it makes iPhones before the 11 series feel significantly more dated. Now something else that makes previous iPhones seem just a little bit more ancient is the ultra wide camera. With the ultra wide, you can get a bigger field of view without having to take a step back, and like night mode, it's genuinely useful, not just a gimmick. Ultra wide does flush a little bit of the image quality down the loo, especially again with those indoor situations, but the quality loss isn't really noticeable unless you zoom in. But speaking of zooming in, there's also a telephoto camera on here with 2x optical zoom, meaning it can zoom in two times without pixelating the image. With that being said though, older telephoto lenses such as the one on here aren't the best when it comes to actual quality, and this one is significantly worse in terms of grain and fine details. It may be able to keep the actual resolution of the photo and reduce pixelation, but that's a whole different ball game from how good the actual camera is, if that makes sense. Not that the telephoto on here is bad or anything, but it certainly doesn't match the sharpness and colour accuracy of the main lens. Now telephoto lenses on newer iPhones have pretty much fixed this. They're much better than they used to be, but unfortunately this telephoto lens falls before that time. But all in all though, for 4 year old smartphone cameras, these still pack quite a decent punch. Of course newer iPhones have noticeably better camera quality and more features, but the main difference you'll notice is the amount of grain, blur and noise in those indoor shots with inconsistent lighting. The lenses on the 11 Pro as I mentioned are a lot smaller than on newer handsets, so they let less light in, therefore the image is not going to be as crispy as what we have now. Now the selfie camera is also brilliant, it's so consistent and you can get some super professional looking shots with it. So yeah, nothing really that bad to say about the selfie camera, except obviously the fact that it's going to be slightly worse than newer selfie cameras, but in general, it's terrific. Now video can be recorded in up to 4K at 60 frames per second, and I mean, what can I say, it's still holding up really well. We get really stable footage, great colours, really everything you need. Like a lot of other things, video on newer phones is noticeably ahead, but unless you're nitpicky about video, it's really not by that much. If you're into filmmaking, more recent iPhones pack in more video tools, such as ProRes and Dolby Vision recording, as well as cinematic mode. But unless you're pretty serious about video, they're nothing more than bells and whistles that most people won't even know are there. All in all, stunning video quality for the price. And now, let's move on to the inside of the iPhone 11 Pro and take a look at the performance. On here, we get the Apple A13 chipset and 4GB of RAM. And there's nothing to say really, except that it's still going to be incredibly fluid no matter what you're doing, whether that be something as light as scrolling social media or as heavy as 3D games. iPhones have really, really stepped up their game in recent years in terms of maintaining a top-end user experience, even after a few years and a few software updates. The differences in performance compared to newer models are trivial, not noticeable unless you're doing a side-by-side -side comparison. So therefore, performance is not something you have to worry about at all, even for years ahead. But while we are on the topic of years ahead, let's talk about just how long this phone will stay usable for in terms of app compatibility and obsolescence. iPhones stay compatible with apps by staying on the latest version of software, and with the iPhone 6s from 2015 retiring with 7 years of updates just last year, we can expect about the same for the iPhone 11 Pro. It should stay supported until around maybe 2025, maybe even 2026, and even for a couple of years past that, the phone should still be usable. You just won't be getting the latest features, security updates, or the most recent versions of apps, but I estimate that it's got maybe 2-3 to three years left, and most people upgrade their phones by the end of that period anyway. So as far as longevity is concerned, it's not going anywhere anytime soon, but at the same time, it's not the best long-term solution. Now usually, the battery life is the biggest issue on used smartphones, but that's not quite the case on the iPhone 11 Pro. Battery life on here was one of its best points back in 2019, with the normal 11 Pro being able to last 4 hours longer than the previous 10s, and the 11 Pro Max being able to last 5 hours longer than the 10s Max. And that incredible feat definitely helps the phones out today. The 11 Pro series is far better off battery life-wise than the 10s and 10s Max. Provided your battery health in settings is over 80%, you should still get through a day with light to moderate use. Especially if you have the 11 Pro Max, that should be even better. Low battery health leads to obviously less usage time, but also sluggish performance and random shutdowns. So before you buy, definitely check the battery health of the unit, and if it's below 80%, give it a miss. Otherwise, battery on the 11 Pro is definitely a lot better than what you'd expect from a phone this old.
And so with everything about the iPhone 11 Pro considered, is this the mid-range phone for you in 2023? Well, for $320, it's got quite a lot going for it compared to what else is out there. For example, you also have the iPhone 11 for around $250, $300, which is missing bells and whistles such as the OLED display, telephoto camera, and lacks the premium design. But go a bit higher in price and you'll find the iPhone 12 and 12 mini for about $350 to $300 respectively. The 12 does have a better chipset and main cameras, but it's missing out on the telephoto lens and premium design, although the display is pretty much the same. So with that, you're getting better longevity and cameras for not much more. But the 11 Pro is still a great bargain that has plenty of life left in it and specs that still have a lot to give. But if the iPhone 12 with its better specs for slightly more sounds appealing, check out this video to see if it's for you. Thank you so much for watching. This is Tom with Texbury, and I'll see you as always next time.